Hello students. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about metaballs today and how to color them, put a simple background into your camera view, adjust your camera and view, and then how to uh, render out a final image for turning in for your assignment. Um, first of all, I'm going to start off with a couple of settings um, in Blender that I find helpful, at least for this particular exercise. Um, You'll notice I have my screencast keys on, which means this little mouse icon down here in the bottom left corner will show you what mouse button I'm using when I click on something or uh, what keyboard key I'm touching when I when I use the keyboard. So um, be sure to watch down there to know what I'm clicking on. Secondly, I'm going to change my render engine here in the render settings from EV to Cycles. Cycles is a more accurate render engine than EV. Um, it's a little slower, but nothing we're going to do today is going to be very render intensive, so uh, that's how I'm going to handle that. I'm going to start off by selecting and deleting our default cube here, since we're going to be dealing with metaballs, and then I'm going to add my first metaball. Um, I can do that either by going to the add menu here, clicking on metaball and just adding a ball, or I can get the same menu by tapping shift A on the keyboard, and then I have my metaball option here. You'll notice that that puts an object into our outliner called mball, and that is basically the root of a metaball family and metaball families will all interact with each other so if I add another metaball here and then move it up in the z-axis by tapping GZ on the keyboard with it selected um, then you can see they interact with each other and uh, that's because they're part of the same family they'll also have the same color or material if I assign a material to the root, all of the members of the family have that same material and color. Um, if I want separate um, metaball families or, or um, anything like that, then I can duplicate this again. So let's just hit Shift D to do a duplicate this time. You can see I've got mball.002 here now, and it's part of the same family. It's interacting. Um, but I'm going to change it, so let's call it Arthur. And you can see that it's no longer interacting with those other two metaballs, mball.001 and mball. Um, and it's actually through the naming that that is controlled. So you can control what metaballs are part of which families by naming them over here. So let's, uh, let's start making some colors here. So I'm going to grab my root M ball here and go to my material tab and create a new material. We'll just call this M ball.001 and I'm going to make it bright fire engine red and you can see that that hasn't actually done anything for us because we're still just in a flat shaded viewport. So I'm going to change to our material preview. You can see that that is a nice fire engine red right now. So I'm going to select um, a metaball from another family. So let's select Arthur here and we will make mball.arthur. That's going to be my new material name and we'll make this a nice royal blue. There we go. A little darker. All right. And Arthur will propagate that material to any uh, duplicates that are made from it. So Shift D and constrain to the X axis, Shift D X, and you can see that I've got two colors of metaballs going now. Um, that's because I have two families. Um, okay, so once I've played around and uh, made something that I'm pretty happy... Oh, you know what? I'm going to show you one more thing actually for metaballs. Um, one more thing that might be handy. So I'm going to duplicate part of our first metaball family here and just kind of bring it in like this and then if I tab into edit mode and go into my, sorry, my metaball settings over here and I just check this little box that says negative then it actually kind of 
well, it, it does just what it says there. It acts in a negative, subtractive way. Uh, which can be kind of handy. It's still a meta ball. It's still there. It's just acting in a negative subtractive way. So that can be um, kind of a neat way to understand or, or to, I guess, push farther with the interactions between meta balls. Again, you tab into edit mode and go over here to the meta ball setting and check that box that says negative. I'm going to tab back into object mode here. Okay, so now let's uh, figure out how to put in a background. So if I tap zero on the number pad, you can see that I'm looking through my camera and that's actually not a very good view uh, because it doesn't show everything that I've made here. So I'm going to hit shift tilde. And if you've ever played a video game, then this gives you video game controls over the camera. So I can wiggle my mouse and look around. I can tap S to fly backward. W to fly forward, A to fly left, D to strafe right, and Q to strafe down, and E to strafe up. So between those controls, I can kind of just walk around with the camera here and say, okay, that actually looks a little better right there. We're going to use, and I just click when I'm, when I'm happy with my view. So that's going to be my new view. Um, that's going to be the scene that we're going to render. It's all in this lighter gray background here. Okay, so we need to put in a background and there's a lot of ways to do this in Blender. I'm just going to show you probably one of the simplest but just be aware that because it's so simple it also doesn't have a huge amount of control. Um, there are much more sophisticated and um, controllable ways to do this but if I go over here to my world settings this little planet Earth um, you can see that our surface the surface for our world is just currently set to a background color this dark gray so I'm gonna click on this background and or sorry I'm gonna click on the little dot here and oh you know what I'm clicking on the wrong one and I'm gonna click on the color the little dot to the left of color and I'm gonna choose an image texture here instead of a color and uh, from there I can just open let's go to uh, for instance let's see where's my Dropbox there we go I'm gonna go into my photos and I'll just pick an image here, Earth Shots. Okay, and you can't really see it right now because we're not looking at a rendered preview. Um, but that will put an image into our background. Um, under Repeat, I'm going to choose Clip and under vector I'm going to choose window and that will actually if we look at a rendered view that will actually put the image into our background there now if we want something a little more procedural than like an image or something we don't we can get rid of this image texture and we can choose for instance um, well let's say I want a gradient um, from one part of the screen to another so I can go here to my color settings and I can choose a color mix and I'm going to choose let's uh, let's go 45 degrees or 90 degrees off from our color scheme here on the color wheel and just go with kind of green and fuchsia okay so there's my there's my two colors that I want to mix together as a gradient and um, so I, this will seem a little bit confusing, but I'm going to open up a node editor. You don't have to use the node editor for this, but I want you to see what's going on. So if I choose a shader editor here and instead of object, I go to my world, you can kind of see that it's graphically representing what we've done here. We've got our world output got our background and we've chosen a color mix for that so from there I'm going to choose a mix factor input and I'm going to 
scroll up here and choose a gradient texture to mix those colors. Okay, and what that will do for me is that will start mixing those colors as my background. So I've switched over to a rendered view here. And my vector here is set again to default and that's just kind of like hey how do, how do I how do you want me to map this around the world and once again I'm going to choose this window setting and what that is is that says basically I want you to map it however it looks right from my view window so there's my gradient um, from left to right and I can remix this on the fly I can say you know what that green's not great let's uh, Let's go with more of an orange there. There we go. Okay, so that's kind of how you can put together different things into the background. There's a lot of options here. You don't have to use a gradient texture, for instance. Um, you know, if I want to get really, whoop, let's scroll up. There we go. If I want to get really silly about it, I could maybe choose a Musgrave texture. Um, and then I get kind of these funky dots. Um, if I really want to get experimental I can start playing with these over in the node editor you can see I've got a lot more inputs and outputs than can be reasonably tracked through this kind of stacking interface over here on the right so it's to your advantage eventually to learn the nodes in the shader editor but for now we don't really have to so I'll right click on the division between these windows and join the areas all right, so last thing, um, we're going to render this out and save it for our assignment submission. So if I go to my render menu and just click on render image, you can see the shortcut there is F12. Then it renders it out for me. And from here, I can just go to my image menu and click save as. And that will allow me to save as a PNG or a JPEG with whatever file name I choose. I hope that's helpful. Um, that's basically how I would recommend you solving those issues and, and uh, going about playing with metaballs and making some uh, artwork of your own. Good luck!